Hello, friends. I am so excited today because we're talking with my friend Kelly Tyen. And Kelly is, let me see, how would I describe Kelly? Kelly is a powerhouse. She is beast mode 24 seven. She is beautiful. And most of all, she has a heart and a passion for Jesus that matches all of those things. And I know that's what she's going to bring into this conversation today. So I'm so excited to bring her to you. Kelly. Hello. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Uh, that was beautiful. I feel so honored and so blessed. Jesus is my main source of everything. You hit it right on the head, girl. And I'm so excited to be here. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So tell everybody about you, who you are, what you do, all the things. Well, I am first a lover of Jesus, as you already said. I'm a mom of two, happily married wife. I live in Boston. You will notice as I start talking. <laughs> what, you have an stop, accent? What? what? As I start talking. Right. It's like, okay. yeah. remind me every minute. They repeat everything I say. Mom, why don't I talk like you? I said, I don't know. I grew up in a different part of the city. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have an accent and um, I'm very proud of it. I used, to actually, I used to try to fix it and now I've accepted it. Right. So I have been coaching women for over 20 years in many different areas. I started out in business. I was a big network marketer. And so I had big teams that I led women in. Then I moved into fitness for 11 years and I've coached women in fitness, getting strong in their bodies. And then I moved into more bringing my faith into my business over the years because I realized we can do all the things, we can be successful, yet a lot of times we're missing the biggest piece and it's the faith. And not only faith in God, it's faith in ourselves, which does connect to God. And we can jump into that because my heart is for women to really help women see themselves the way God sees them as ambitious, mm -hmm. free, loving. We don't have to stay stuck and distraught and distracted all the time. So that's mm. where I am at right now in my life. I love it. I love it. And you are so right. I think that so many women struggle with faith in themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm very interested to hear your take on how faith in self is connected to faith in God, because I fully believe that. I mean, the Lord says who we are and for whatever reason, we have a hard time believing it. And that leads to the negative self-talk and to going down the roads of, I mean, X, Y, Z, I can't do it. I'm stuck. I can't, I wasn't made for this, blah, blah, blah. So tell me what you're seeing when you're working with women in that realm and how you help. So I first want to just tell you a little about me because what happened was I did grow up as a Christian. I had Christian parents, amazing. My mom talks about Jesus 24 seven every day. It was actually annoying most of the time, <laughs> <laughs> you know, being a kid, you're like, what is okay. Relax with the Jesus. But that's how I grew up. And I, she modeled Jesus's behavior and it, mm. it was so beautiful that mm -hmm. she always had love exuding from her no matter what she was facing. This woman suffered with rheumatoid arthritis. So she had a very awful, debilitating disease, but she all, her faith just, it was always shining through her. And I knew that, you know, if we can just have a little of that faith, we can get through anything. Yeah. But as I grew up and as I started leaning into my faith, you, you, you hit the nail on the head by saying self-talk. You know, I competed in fitness. I had a lot of accolades. Like I told you, I was a network marketer. I did very well, but I struggled with my negative self-talk mm -hmm. all the time. I never felt up to par. I kind of quieted my voice at times. And I, I had to learn to make that stop. And the only way I could make that stop was if I got silent with God mm -hmm. and I let him pave my, like carve out different pathways in my life. That means I got into my Bible and I wanted the blueprint to life. How am I supposed to get through life your way, Lord, so I can shine the way my mom shines. So digging deeper into the Bible, just really 
painted the picture of who Jesus was and how he wants to be part of everything in my life. So I leaned into him more and I learned that he loves me for who I am. He made me perfect in his image. So why aren't I loving myself? Why am I holding myself back? Mm -hmm. So as my faith started getting stronger and me leaning more into him, letting go, letting God in all those areas, I learned how to help women do the same. And I took that, you know, I, I use biblical principles I always go right back to the Bible because you know how everything we need to know is in this book that people are so afraid to open. And once, and so that's really how I tied my faith in. Once I realized my identity in Christ and and became awakened to that, Mm -hmm. I, I, I started flying and I knew if it happened for me, it could happen for other women. And I wanted to show them because I had awful self-talk. For a mm-hmm. long, uh, you know, for a long time, and and I know how awful that can be to constantly play that story of I can't, I'm not good enough. Why should I write the book? Why would I ever do a podcast? I don't have fun, and all that is just delaying what God wants for you. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. That's so good. Why? Why do you think? Um, why do you think women struggle with that so much? Because, and I could be totally wrong. I'm not a dude. So I'm not in their heads. Let's just say, I don't understand them any more (laughs) than they probably understand us. But it seems to me that negative self-talk is more prevalent with women. Why do you think that is? Oh, I mean, this is my opinion, but body image. I I, Mm -hmm. I just, you know, being 50 now, we've lived now some years, right? And some years, we have lived some years. We have lived some years. And I, you know, I go back to my teenage years and the boys in my high school, they weren't so concerned about the things we were concerned about. They would just go out, be themselves. And we're always comparing ourselves to our girlfriends and she has this and she has that. And it gets worse as we get older. I just, you're so right. It is more prevalent. I really believe it is in women. And then what happens for us, what I think happens is those stories that we start telling ourselves as young girls, they stick. And Mm. that's what the devil wants. And he reminds us every single moment when we look in the mirror, oh, you know, your body doesn't look like hers or the devil just wants to constantly remind us. And I think a lot of women hold on to that. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm speaking for myself too. I'm being very honest. I know I did. I, you know, when I competed in fitness, I was stage ready. I was on stage because I I was doing, um, I did four national bikini ch- type um, competitions. <laughs> and I won all four of those, which was a Ooh. very big deal. And I'm only yeah. telling you that. But the day I stepped off that stage after my fourth one, I gained 12 pounds in two weeks. I wasn't Mm -hmm. stage ready anymore. I was embarrassed. I felt ashamed. And that carried through for a few years. And, and, And I played the story until I decided one day, and I'll share with you my mantra that stuck. It's been yeah. It is life-changing because I got so sick and tired of listening to the lies that I was telling myself in just bringing into my my atmosphere. Even my husband's like, what is wrong with you? He would Mm -hmm. think I was crazy because I was constantly complaining about certain things about myself or my body or whatever I would be talking about. But my mantra is, I will not be defeated by my inner negative voice. I actually mm-hmm. wrote it on my walls. I wrote it on mirrors. I had it on sticky notes. I had it in my phone. So every day I could start repeating life into myself. And I that, love that. It broke the cycle. I'm telling you, the minute I said, I, I'm going to speak life and faith on repeat into myself, that's when my whole life changed completely. Mm-hmm. And it's because so I wasn't doing that before. And I think many of us, we go about our day, where they say that you probably know these stats, you know, there's 80,000 thoughts, something like that, that we think of a day, 90% of those thoughts are repetitive. So whether they're good or bad, they're repetitive. 
everything you think daily is what you've probably been thinking for years. Yeah. You actually yeah. think about it. And so in order to break those cycles, you have to decide to break those cycles first mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or they're just going to play all day like a record player. Yeah, that's, that's, that's powerful. I, I feel like, okay, for, before I forget, say your mantra one more time, because I know I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it in the show notes for people. But I think having something like that, it doesn't have to be Kelly's, although I, I don't think she would mind if you borrowed hers, oh, but okay. I think having something that you can repeat to yourself over and over again, like she's saying, break that cycle, put a new record on the record player yes. and have something new and positive and affirming going through. So Kelly, tell us your mantra one more time. Okay. I will not be defeated by my inner negative voice. That's Love it. Love it. Love and it's it. almost not like be defeated. stomp my foot. I would say it. I would say it out loud. I'm telling you, I got crazy about it because I needed the negative voices to stop. Yeah. Whether even in my business, growing my business, writing my book. Oh, don't, don't publish it yet. It's not, no one's, you know, all the things that constantly spiral us out. You know, I went through breast cancer. I remember mm -hmm. just being fearful. And I, there comes a time where we have to take charge and speak the life back into us because nobody else is going to do that. We can mm -hmm. listen all day to the things, but it's really our own voice that needs to be spoken to ourselves. That's yeah. where the change happens. That's where the breakthroughs happen. And it's yeah. an amazing place to be. And I love working with women on doing this mm. because so many struggle. Yeah, that's good. I I feel like, um, and you know, push back if you don't agree, because I'm all about some sparky conversation, okay. but I, I feel like the negative voice that we're hearing in our heads a lot of times can sound like us, but it's actually the enemy that's whispering in our ear and he's duplicating what our voice sounds like. Mm. And it it's straight from the enemy. He wants to keep us down. He wants to keep us small. He wants to keep us from stepping out in faith to actually fulfill the plan that God has for our lives. He mm. wants our purpose to be nothing mm -hmm. where God wants our purpose to be everything. Mm -hmm. And I, and so it's that inner self talk, but mm -hmm. ultimately I think it comes from the enemy. I do. I think it comes from the enemy and just, well, the stories that we tell ourselves, you know, I think it's a, a, a mixture really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think the enemy wants to come in and make us feel defeat, but I also yeah. think part of the negative voices is through our experiences, if we failed at something, if we yeah. didn't do something right, or we weren't the best mom we could be, and you know mm -hmm. how that is, and we we condemn ourselves. Sure. So, and the enemy just exempt, you know, the enemy just it's like an explosive. Yeah. He puts yeah. the match to it, and it just, you know, yeah, it trickles into five hundred more thoughts. Yeah, I agree with that totally, and I I do think that going back to your original point about getting in the word. When, mm -hmm. when we're dealing with this negative self-talk that is so prevalent in my brain, anybody else? Probably. Um, I think that the only thing that can break that cycle is getting in the word and getting in contact with who God is saying that I am and creating a mantra around that. I'm sure that your work faith-wise and in the word and connecting with God and and hearing his voice spoken over you is where all of that was birthed. And I just think that that's so important. All of it was birthed from the word. I had yeah. to dig deep in, in even just Joshua 1, 9. Mm. I would say over and over, Kelly, you are strong and courageous. You are strong. I mean, I remember just two weeks ago, I was going through something. I'm in like that menopause, pre-menopause, hormone <laughs> raging era. And it's not fun, ladies. Yeah. It's if you're going through it, we need to lock arms because it's tough. It's a tough yeah. place to be because I know mentally things are happening in my mind. And I just, I remember going up to my closet a couple of weeks ago, just saying, okay, I'm strong and courageous. I am strong and, and, and I'll <laughs> do that. I, I mean, it, it works. Yeah. It's, you know, when you lean on those verses that God gave us to breathe life back into us, amazing things can happen. I'm yeah. mad that it took so long to do this. 
but right. doing it right. Yeah. And it's, it's good to teach the young girls that are coming up yes. in our lives and share this stuff because sometimes we take it for granted that we know it, but they don't. And we have Absolutely. to constantly speak life to the people around us and mm -hmm. that light that we're different from the rest. Yeah. And they're watching. They're, they're watching, watching us. They're mm -hmm. watching how we handle the things that come up in our lives. They're watching how we talk about ourselves and our body image and Absolutely. our work and, you know, whatever it is, our goals, et cetera, et cetera. They're watching. And mm -hmm. so being a good example for them, I think is super important. Um, so I want to, I want to turn the conversation just a little bit and I want to talk to you about your, would you say that it's your brand when I say addicted to the climb? Yes. Okay. So Kelly's brand addicted to the climb it, uh, when I first heard that, I'm like, okay, I could get on board with that. I'm, I have, I'm an Enneagram eight, I'm a go for it type of girl. I'm a driver. Yep. Let's be addicted to the climb, but tell me what it really means, Kelly, because I know that it, you, you work with very, um, very driven, high achiever, high performance women, but addicted to the climb isn't necessarily pigeonholed in that mm -hmm. level of achievement or, or drive. Right. So tell, tell exactly. us about addicted to the climb. Yes, you're so right. And yes, it is about drive. It's about the climb, never giving up, being the resilient woman that God wants us to be, keep going. However, it's a personal, it's, it has personal meaning because for me, I told you a little bit about my mom, how she suffered my whole entire life from when I was born with the rheumatoid. And I watched her never, ever sick. She just climbed every single day. She climbed in faith. And so as I went through the certain, you know, traumatic events in my own life, I said, I really am addicted to the climb because I've had to climb my way out of very dark places. Mm. You know, I said going through breast cancer, I have, my son was, um, he's blind in one eye and it was very traumatic. I was told he had a brain, um, a spot on his brain and just all the things that we've been through. My dad had cancer. Then I lost my mom and I'm really just addicted to the climb is very meaningful for me to help women also get back up. Let's become resilient. God didn't create us to stay crying in a pity party. He told us be strong and courageous that we can get to the other side of the mountain and we can see beautiful views at the tops of the mountains, if we still, if we continue our climb, I always say we're either, all of us are either heading towards a climb in our life, we're either on a climb right now, or we just got off a climb. So yeah. life to me is a climb in every single way. And it's just a matter of us climbing our way up, climbing our way out and climbing our way through, because that's the only way to get to the other side. So that's really what the meaning is for me. Mm, that's beautiful. I love that. And I, I think that every woman can identify with that definition of the mm -hmm. climb mm -hmm. because it happens every day, right? <laughs> every day. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're working with women in your business, mm -hmm. besides the the self-image and the negative self-talk, what is something that you really feel like you're seeing over and over and over again that women are struggling with in life and business? A lot of times it's doubt, doubting mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. They're very distracted. I mean, today life is very distracting, different, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, uh, gosh, it, it's crazy. And so a lot of women, ambitious women that want to get things done, they're very distracted by... Mm -hmm you know, time management, they're not managing their time. Well, they are in, in what I always go back to is creating a morning routine as simple as that. I mean, mm. there's one tool you can just take today. And maybe you, you know, you talk about this, we all in our being a Jesus loving woman, I'm assuming many of us spend time with the Lord, whether it's in the morning or, or at night, I just think before the distractions come flooding in, Spend that quiet time, whether it's five minutes or 50 minutes, it doesn't matter. Just be with him to get really 
just clean it all out, be in peace, let his peace flow through you so you can start your day. So I find that women need to become less distracted, more focused on their faith mm. because you know, with God, all things are possible. He'll work it out and come back to their faith. And that's really, you know, the start of it. What, what I do with these ambitious women. And you had asked me, you know, what I see is I think a lot of times the women I work with, because they're middle-aged, they wake up and they say, how did I get here? They've lost <laughs> yeah. them, right? Hello. Yeah. Themselves along the way somehow. And it's because they're too distracted by all the things they're trying to do. They're hustling mm -hmm. harder. Instead of letting the Lord guide and lead, spend quiet time with him. He will tell you your next right steps. You'll know you'll have more discernment to take those steps. And I, that's what I pull and bring women back to. It's mm -hmm. really, it's really about let's get back to the basics of life yeah. with God partnering up with him. And then the rest will fall into place. It really yeah. does. Yeah. That's, that is exactly right. A hundred percent. I was just out on my walk this morning. I have gotten out of my own morning routine and, you know, I had a birthday last week. And so I'm declaring this the year to reclaim my health. And yes. so got back into my morning routine, including walks. And I was out of my walk this morning and I really felt like the Lord said, if you're feeling dry, if you're feeling not creative, if you're feeling not motivated, it's because you're not plugged in to yes. me and my power source, the, the creator of the universe will give you creativity. Yes. All the time. The drive. And, and it's how can we, I mean, we so easily get distracted and move away from that relationship when that is what should sustain and propel every area of our life, including our businesses. I'm so, so good. And I want to bring this up because before you pressed record, you mentioned my LinkedIn. People uh, yeah. ask me all the time, how did you grow your LinkedIn? Do you write all that, Kelly? Like, oh my gosh, I read your content. Can I just tell you, follow me on LinkedIn. It's just my name. I have gone from zero followers to 38, over 38,000 in a year and a half. In Holy every, cow. I know it's insane. Every single post I write. And if you are a LinkedIn person, it's a long form copy. So, and I'm going to be totally honest with you. I only get my creativity from when I'm in tune, like you said, plugged into him and mm -hmm. it's easy. It flows because I'm aligned with his assignment for me, first of all, and mm. at every single thing I write about, I'm never tired. You know, sometimes I should say it is a lot of writing, but I do enjoy writing, but I'm so plugged into Jesus every single morning that creativity just flows. And I want to share what he speaks to me every single morning. So mm -hmm. my content comes from that. And I yeah. never get exhausted. The only time I do, just like what you said, is when I'm a little distant from him. I'm like, oh, what am I going to write? Oh, I don't have a post ready. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't really been plugged into my Lord. And because yeah. I'm telling you, he, that's where it all stems from. Yeah, I totally agree. I can go back in my social media feed. You could probably go back in my social media feed and... <laughs> <laughs> totally tell yes. when I am dialed in to my relationship yes. with the Lord and when I pull back, yep. because you're exactly right. The content is different because you're just speaking his words mm -hmm. through you instead of struggling to speak your own. Yes. And it, that never works, ladies. It never yes. works. Or you're trying to copy what somebody else says and you're trying yeah, to yeah. look it's like it, it, it. No, it's not good. It's not good. It's if not. you're struggling with content, get in the word yes. and spend time quiet before the Lord and ask him what he wants you to speak. Like my next post, I already have my next post. I found it on my walk today. Um, yeah, just, that'll just be a teaser. It's about, I weed. love it. I love it. About well, weed. Right. Well, if you need help with anything, get into the word. I think that yes. can be the theme of this conversation today. Yeah. If you are struggling in your self-talk, 
get into the word. If you're struggling yeah. with being creative, get it. it's 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 amazing how we have this beautiful living breathing word of God yes. that breathes life into us and sometimes we just don't open it and we mm. and, and I'm telling you like make a pact with yourself to just open the word. Do it different. Ask him to breathe life into you, to speak to you differently. And every day is a fun surprise with God. Oh my gosh. I'm going to, I'm going to tear up here in a, yeah. Wow. This is powerful, Kelly. So good. So much, um, so much truth and wisdom here before, mm. before we close this episode, I really do want you to talk about LinkedIn for a moment, because I know that for a lot of business owners, self-included, mm -hmm. um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, although I am not a TikToker, um, but those tend to be the top social media platforms. Mm -hmm. And I think we are missing the boat as business owners. Hello, business owners. Let's dial in for a second with not being on LinkedIn, because that is for business people. Exactly. And so, um, I'll just say for myself, LinkedIn is intimidating. Mm -hmm. I think some of that is the negative self-talk because I don't believe that I really belong there being a small business owner, just starting out what, you know, fill in the blanks, whatever, whatever the negative self-talk is. Do I really belong here? I'm not C-suite. I'm not blah, 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 blah. Um, and you can psych yourself out about it. That's number one. Number two, long form content intimidates me because Unlike you, I'm not an author of two books and writing is not my forte. I, I love podcasting. I love the, the voice notes. I love verbal, uh, verbalizing my thoughts instead of writing them down. And so, um, talk about LinkedIn, your experience, why you decided to get on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and then kind of address people's fears and why they just need to get over it. You're talking to me, by the okay. way. Just tell me okay. why I have to get over it, Kelly. Oh, I'm talking to me because you're me a few years <laughs> ago. And okay. I had a, a best friend who was a LinkedIn influencer tell me for probably at least two years, Kelly, get on LinkedIn. I'm like, okay, okay. Totally fearful. Not, I was like, no, I would say okay to her. And I would never, ever. I'm like, I am, I, I come from, I was a teacher, Okay. I was a teacher, a fitness, I'm more of an entrepreneur. I never worked in C-suite. I always told myself I'm not smart like these people. I don't have the business savviness that some of these LinkedIn people have. I had this whole picture painted, okay, of what LinkedIn was mm -hmm. until I said, you know what, Lord, me and you are going to go on LinkedIn and <laughs> it's going to speak my heart. I'm just going to talk about my heart because my it. friend said, talk about your faith. And I said, one day I found it. Well, what happened was I was very tired of Facebook. I have Facebook never, it really wasn't doing much for my business and my, my reach. And mm -hmm. then late, um, Instagram was getting very still. I, nothing was happening there. And I was lonely. I wanted to talk to people. I wanted community. And yet mm -hmm. nobody was DMing me. They, they really weren't in, engaging. So yeah. I was at my last straw and I said, oh, here we go. Okay, God, we're going to take this to LinkedIn with Addicted to the Climb and I'm going to give it one year. I told myself and promised myself I will post every day, not the weekends, five days a week, every day for one year. Wow. And yes, I did. I made the commitment because I said I have nothing to lose because nothing was happening on any other platform. <laughs> so yeah. It was either that or not have a business anymore because I didn't know what to do. I was kind of at wit's end and I had my first book out um, and I wanted to get that out to people. I knew I had a voice for the Lord and to help women and because I've been coaching them for so long. So I just jumped on and I started just speaking my truth, what's on my heart, my connection and how God has really just helped me in so many ways, climb my way, as I told you, out of different dark places, how mm -hmm. the Lord has given me the courage in my life to climb, to write a book. And I just started sharing me. 
And that's what people started resonating with. They don't mm. want the, it, LinkedIn is really for me, what I have seen in a lot of different content creators on LinkedIn, it's such a community. Once mm. you get the rhythm going and you'll find your people, you'll, you'll attract the right ones. You build this beautiful community. I have so many friends on LinkedIn mm. that I talk to on the phone now. I've become close to them. I've haven't really, I've only met one or two, but it's amazing my relationships that because I stayed consistent, because I didn't try to be someone else, yeah. I posted my own words and that drew in the right people. I'm telling mm -hmm. you, it, just, it takes time, just like any other platform. It doesn't happen overnight, but once you start, you know, engaging with other people, you got to do a little of the work. I'm not going to lie. I will spend... 15 minutes before I post engaging. Then once I post, I engage with comments immediately. You can't post and ghost. I'm yeah. sure that's how it is on other platforms, but I took LinkedIn very serious because I wanted those kind of people in my people that I knew were ambitious like myself mm -hmm. that w did have jobs or maybe they wanted to start a side business they need Jesus more in their lives. I mean, everyone needs more Jesus, right? That's true. <laughs> if you're a CEO or an executive or you're running seven companies, yeah. these are the women that I'm finding that, and they need faith. So, yeah. and it's changing their lives. They're becoming better leaders, hmm. becoming, you know, better communicators. So that that's really my little journey of LinkedIn. And I love it. That's amazing. So from zero to 38,000 followers in a year. That is- a year, uh, Well, in my mind. September will be two years. So whenever this podcast oh. comes out. Wow, that's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So let me just ask you this. For people who just said, okay, uh, LinkedIn is out for me because I can't commit to posting five days a week. Do you think that that is the cadence that's necessary to grow as rapidly as you did? I think if you want to grow rapidly- Yes, you should be on there every single day, at least in, in state at the same time of day. Mm -hmm. Don't be 7 a.m., 6 p.m., 5 a.m., you know, kind of be consistent so people can expect you. Mm. I, However, this would be a trial and error kind of thing to do because you could try three days a week and see yeah. how it goes. You might grow, you might grow a little slower I just think going all in, if you're going to go all in on something mm -hmm. and you want to try something, even just give it six months and yeah. try to go three to five times a week and see what happens. It's it I, because there's no, you know, algorithm, algorithms change so often. I hate I, that word. I, I hate that word. <laughs> I hate everything about it. Listen, if I didn't have to be on social media, I wouldn't, period. <laughs> I'm jealous of the people that actually don't have to be on social but yeah. it is beautiful. Like I said, building yeah. the community, finding your people, especially if you're an entrepreneur like us. Yeah, for sure. So let me ask you this. Do you feel like the time that you've invested in LinkedIn has had the return on investment for your business that you're wanting? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. All my clients come from LinkedIn. Amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They okay. say, I mean- I just got a coaching inquiry this morning and I always have on my application, where did you find me? You know, how did you connect with me? Yeah. LinkedIn. It's always LinkedIn. So I okay. have a mastermind for women that I started. I'm on my um, third session of the master. I do 12 week sessions and I'm mm -hmm. on my third cohort. All my clients have come from LinkedIn. Wow. That's amazing. Because I don't think that most people can say that about other social media platforms. I just, I don't think the ROI is there for a lot of them anymore, mm -hmm. especially considering the amount of work that people have to do yes. to keep up with those other platforms. So yes. that's amazing to me and something that I definitely need to take to heart for sure. So you said you have a mastermind. Is that, uh, is that open all the time? It's 12 weeks long, but can you get on a wait list? Like all the time? You can get on a wait list. Yes. You can okay. get on a wait list for sure. Okay. And mm -hmm. then you do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yes, I do. Okay. I do. And she has not one, but 
two books. Tell us really quickly about those because I'm going to link all of this stuff in the show notes for people to come find you and to grab your books. Amazing. My first book is Addicted to the Climb. It's 30 personal stories that I wrote about how I've climbed my way out of different dark places, as I said, not even just dark, just climbing my way out of building a business and how yeah. feeling and my fitness is in there. Things, you know, how I've bounced back. It's all about being resilient. If you need a mm. little courage in your life, it's a great yeah. book that they're two minute, two to three minute reads. It's not a whole chapter book. It's not a big book you read front to back. It's pick up, open it up to the middle. You can read one story, feel empowered to do something different in your That's life. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. And then the second book is called The One Prayer. That came because I felt I was very scattered in my praying mm -hmm. and I wanted to get more intentional. I always being a faith person, people would ask me pretty much every day, can you pray for my mom? Can you pray for my aunt? Or maybe I'm watching the news and I see something horrific and I'm like, I want to pray for that little boy, you yeah. know, that happened. And then I forget the day goes mm -hmm. on again, we're distracted. So I wanted this one prayer. It's it's a journal, but it's not just your average journal. It's it is it there are about five chapters about prayer, how to be intentional, ways to pray, all digging deep into prayer, what prayer can do for you. Because my tagline is what if your one prayer could be the one answer to one person's miracle or your own? And wow. it, it's about becoming intentional. So every week. You're talking to God on one page. There's another page to write names of who you're praying for. Like mm -hmm. right now, I've carried my son over for the last several weeks and he'll probably stay for all 52 weeks because I'm our, I'm praying for his college roommate. And I don't mm -hmm. want to forget because there's things that I pray for. Yes, we pray for our kids, but my son's a junior going into senior year next year and then college. But I want to be praying every day to and remind myself to pray for his roommate that God's yeah. going to send because I know those stories of bad roommates. So yes. <laughs> this journal really helps you become intentional and focused about what you're praying for every single week. And it's really been a blessing to so many people. I'm getting notes all the time, like, thank you. So it's been an amazing journey with the two books and awesome. you can find them both on Amazon. Awesome. Awesome. I will link all of that stuff in the show notes. And I'm assuming Kelly, that your, um, your mastermind and your coaching is on your website. Yes. It is. Everything is on addicted to the climb.com. Okay, great. And then one last thing, I, a little birdie told me that you might have a special download for this audience. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. It is called my seven power statements and Bible verses that can set you free from fear, worry, all the things the devil's trying to take you down with. And if you say these seven, you can say one a day, they will absolutely change your life. I promise. That's amazing. Very cool. So I will also link the seven, seven power statements in the show notes for you guys to go grab. That's a free gift from Kelly to you. Kelly, thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your openness to share some hard experiences. I just appreciate you so much and I appreciate how God has gifted you and what you bring to the world. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. God bless. <laughs>